In today's Nonsense Wars production, I cover my build of the Tamiya 1-350 scale Fletcher. I don't do too many plastic models, and I consider myself a novice, but I want to do something different for the channel, and I want to practice for another kit that I might cover in a future video. I did this specific model as it feels like an entry-level offering among Tamiya's 1-350 scale ships. It appears to have a relatively low price, relatively wide availability, and perhaps fewer parts and less detail. I got mine from Amazon for the apparently discounted price of just $26. This typical Tamiya style box contains the parts, water slide decals, an instruction sheet, and a couple miscellaneous pages. The model comes on four sprues, uh, two are identical, and the hull comes as a separate loose piece. For the price, the mold quality seems pretty solid, though I'm not entirely sure what constitutes good or bad these days. On previous plastic models, I've struggled with when to assemble and when to paint. Painting individual parts gives better control over colors, but painting entire assemblies requires less net painting and less parts cleanup. Completing assemblies might also form cavities that I can't easily paint. On top of that, painting on the sprues gives better control over the parts, but again requires more cleanup, and so on and so forth. I tried to make assemblies of the same color before painting them. Effectively, this meant most of the superstructure without the smaller greebles. In general, I used Tamiya cement when joining larger surfaces, due to the longer open time, and I use crazy glue when adhering smaller and more fiddly bits due to the shorter open time. I found the paintbrush applicators on both of these adhesives very helpful for parts of all sizes. I generally had an easy time assembling unpainted components. I mostly had to clean up parts where they joined the sprues partly because I don't have small or sharp enough snips. The hull had the worst flashing. Uh, most parts had little to none, and even the bigger pieces mostly fit out of the box without any additional sanding. Still, you should always test fit before gluing. I painted most parts and assemblies secured to kebab sticks with removable mounting putty. I kept some smaller parts on the sprues, especially if they connected at a mounting point. I found it much easier to spray things in the air than on a table, and I had to paint both sides of most parts either way. I used gold NC acrylic spray paint for everything gray and a mix of testers enamel and these Meng acrylic paints for smaller bits of different colors. Now, I have to admit I messed up at least twice. The decks should be a darker gray, and the raised lines should be yet another shade. I assembled the superstructure buildings before realizing the former, and I couldn't, for the life of me, do a good job on the latter. I found the decks and the lines too cumbersome and too small to mask off post hoc, and felt that a single color looked better than my crappy hand painting, so I ended up painting all of it the same gray. While I could not mask the deck or the lines, I did mask parts of the hull to paint the waterline and the underside. The molding detail actually has two lines showing exactly where to mask. I hand painted the black section as a test and rattle canned the red section afterward. Thanks to the guides, both lines came out very straight, but
but despite trying a couple different types of masking tape, the edges all came out a bit jagged. This particular red spray paint also caused a ton of headache as it apparently didn't want to fully dry and kept coming off on my hands for days. I also did hand paint some smaller parts that needed multiple colors, uh, mostly primary and secondary battery, but I did some of the searchlights and windows as well. I used both the testers paints and the Mang acrylics applied with an army painter precise detail brush. I added a layer of weathering over the entire ship using a no-name branded wash. I washed some parts of the superstructure and some parts of the deck separately, but I'm not sure of the best approach. I think I should do it after the final assembly, but I had a hard time getting a consistent finish on large surfaces and a hard time wiping off excess wash between fitted greebles. I was lucky that one of the Meng paints matched the gold gray well enough such that I could do a bit of cleanup. The limited number of water slide decals went on easily enough. The only fiddliness came from their small size. I manipulated them with a brush and tweezers and they generally settled very well. I also built this specific kit because of the scale. In the Congo video, I talked about comparing models of the same scale and the same applies for plastic ones. Uh, this is the same lineup as before from a different angle. Historically, the Fletcher is actually the newest ship of the lot. Uh, she was built in 1941, whereas the other three were all built around 1910. Finally, you can see the mold quality of the Tamiya Fletcher compared to that of a larger but older Lindbergh Fletcher. I think the latter did have much more visible seams on these greebles. On that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day.